Hi, fifth grade scientists. You guys have been learning about how humans have an impact on our environment. So today we're gonna to read a story called Prince William. And as we are reading, there's a handout that goes along with it if you have the packet. And it has some questions that you guys are going to answer before we're reading, and then during and after we're reading as well. These questions are also on the slideshow if you go to our resources. So together we're going to read Prince William by Gloria Rand. Where's dad? Isn't he having breakfast? Danny asked. He left early, her mother replied. He took out he took our boat out to help set containment booms around the fish hatchery. If the spill isn't kept away, all the salmon fry will be killed. It had been three days since a huge tanker, changing course to avoid hitting icebergs, had grounded on a dangerous reef. Jagged rocks ripped open the ship's bottom, sending millions of gallons of oil gushing into the clear waters, and now onto the shores of Prince William Sound, where Denny lived. Remember when you go out today, stay away from the beach, Benny's mother warned. I don't want you near that oil. Do you understand? Okay, Ma, Denny answered. Denny understood, but who would notice if she just looked? Her father was gone and her mother would soon be back on the telephone, lining up volunteers to help clean shorebirds found covered with oil. Denny grabbed her heaviest sweater and headed out the door. What would the beach be like? She had to see. From a low bank above the shore, she saw rocks covered with thick goop and pools of black, black stood in puddles on the sand. The air had a bad oily smell. Denny held her nose. Suddenly, the far, from far down the beach, Denny heard a faint cry, the cry of a little baby. She heard it again. Denny scrambled out to the water's edge, slipping over slimy rocks and stumbling through sticky sand. There she found what was making the pitiful sounds. It was a seal, a baby seal. Oh, you poor, poor puppy, Denny pleaded as she tried to comfort the tiny creature. Don't cry, please don't cry. The oil-coated baby seal was hard to hold and almost impossible to pick up, but Denny did both. Then she gently bundled it into her sweater and carefully picked her way back across the slippery beach toward home. I'd better warn you, she told the pup. My mother is going to be very cross with me, but I couldn't have left you out there on the beach, could I? When Denny stepped onto the cabin's porch, her mother scolded her. I told you to stay away from the beach. Weren't you listening at all? And look at you, you're tracking oil all over the place. Ma, don't be mad, Denny cried. Look what I found. Denny unfolded her sweater. It's a baby seal. Denny's mother carefully took the pup in her hands. This baby is barely alive, but still breathing. We'll do our best to save its life. Together, they launched a skiff and headed across the bay. Denny's mother knew that a rescue center had been set up in the town's school gym. She was certain that someone there could save this seal. The gym was a busy place. As far as they could, as fast as they could, volunteers were cleaning and caring for hundreds of oil-covered bir birds and otters. What have we here? An animal doctor asked as she carefully lifted the baby seal out of Denny's sweater. Looks like a sick little boy to me, a little boy about 10 hours old. It's Prince William, I just named him, Denny announced. He's not going to die, is he? Not if we can help it, the doctor replied. But you've certainly had a rough start in life, haven't you, Prince William? The tiny seal answered with a weak whimper. Denny watched as the doctor and another volunteer went to work. They gave Prince William sugar water to make him stronger, 
washed his coat with gentle soap, and then rinsed him over and over again in salt water. I'm taking Prince William to our animal hospital, the doctor explained. He's very ill and needs to be put in an incubator for a few days, just like a human baby. It's a warm, safe place where he'll find the air easier to breathe. While he lives there, we'll give him lots of fluids, vitamins, and special medicines. Will I ever see him again? Denny asked. Of course, the doctor said. Come visit in a few days. He'll be feeling much better by then. Won't you, little fellow? That night, a fierce storm began to blow. By morning, the oiled waters had churned themselves into miles and miles of brown froth. Look, Ma, Denny gasped as she stared out the window. Come look, our beach is covered with chocolate pudding. That's what it looks like, her mother sighed, but it's just whipped up oil, dirty, filthy oil. A few days later, Denny and her mother went back to town. They saw a lot happening along the way. See those people dressed in bright suits? They're washing oil off the beaches with pressure hoses, Denny's mother explained. The oil goes back into the water. Then it's sucked up by big skimmers and hauled off to a disposal site where it can't do any more harm. Later, she showed Denny other workers who were cleaning beaches by hand. They were wiping oil off each rock and log with heavy rags. Farther on, dead and dying birds and other creatures littered the shore. Denny wished she could watch the workers longer, but her mother had promised to watch birds at the rescue center. They were going to visit Prince William. In town, the sidewalks were crowded with people who had come to help clean up the spills. Cars and trucks jammed the streets and all kinds of boats were packed into the harbor. Planes, one after another, were flying into the airfield nearby. At the rescue center, Denny watched gulls, murs, kitty walks, and otters being washed. A sick deer was brought in, but it died a few minutes later. That deer must have eaten kelp tainted with oil, someone said quietly. I didn't think she would pull through. I've seen it happen before. Bears and their cubs, wolverines and eagles, you name it. They're all being poisoned by the spill. Death, dying, and sickness seemed to be everywhere. Denny felt sadder and sadder. Can't we go now? She finally begged her mother. I really want to see Prince William. At the animal hospital, Denny raced down the main hall toward the incubator room. Prince William's incubator was empty. Oh no, Prince William is dead too, she cried. Don't worry, Denny's mother said calmly. We'll find the doctor. She'll know where he is and if he's okay or not. They hurried to the doctor's office. Your pup is doing just fine, the doctor assured Denny. Why don't you come and see for yourself? We're teaching him to eat herring and to swim, just like his mother would do if she were here. Would you like to watch his swimming lesson? Denny followed the doctor into a large room where a volunteer was moving a little seal back and forth in a big tub of water. Every now and then, she held him under running water. Why is she doing that? Denny asked. So someday when she's back out in the wilderness, he won't be afraid of waterfalls, the doctor smiled. He's going to learn how to swim in a bigger pool too, so he won't be afraid of deeper water either. Prince William won't ever be afraid of anything, Denny replied proudly. As the weeks passed, Denny visited Prince William often. When he wasn't swimming, they took walks down the hospital halls together. As he grew bigger, Prince William cried less and barked more, his own special way of talking. One day, Denny brought Prince William his own stuffed toy, a fuzzy little seal. Prince William chewed and sucked on the toy, just like any baby. Prince William will soon be 10 weeks old, the doctors told Denny one day. It's time for him to go back to the sea and to his relative. Would you and your mother like to come along? 
It wasn't easy to put Prince William back where he belonged. First, he had to be flown to Halibut Cove. Then he had to get used to the waters there, waters much colder than he liked. At first, he cried a lot and kept climbing out to a nearby rock. But in a short time, Prince William was ready to swim free. Near a rocky point, the little seal was put into a sparkling clean water. At first, he stayed close by, but as he became used to his new surroundings, he swam farther and farther away. I'm sure going to miss him, Denny tried to smile. It's really hard to say goodbye, isn't it? It's always hard to say goodbye to a good friend, her mother said softly. I'm sure Prince William is going to miss you too. You're the best friend he'll ever have, that's for sure. You saved his life, Denny. At that moment, Prince William popped up beside the boat Denny and her mother had rowed out to keep him company. See, I'm doing just fine, he seemed to say. Then he swam off to join his wilderness family. The author's note. This story was inspired by the 1989 Alaskan oil spill, but recent disasters such as the Deepwater Horizon oil spill remind us that this is not a problem of the past. Today, sea and land animals in the Gulf of Mexico suffer because of the oil-filled water. Many people are working tirelessly to save the local wildlife. There was a real Prince William. There was also a Princess Diana, Fergie, and Victoria, and a Prince Philip, all healthy survivors of the Alaskan oil spill. Their recoveries and those of other seals were made to help with the help of local school children. These young volunteers raised money by collecting recyclable paper and cans, selling popcorn, and getting pledges from their parents. All the money went toward the purchase of herring, a food rich enough, a food rich enough to supply the fast growing pups with the right diet. Towels and blankets for the seals, care and comforts were also collected. Following major cleanup efforts and the earth's own natural ability to heal itself, waters of Prince William Sound once again sparkle and the beaches appear to be clean. But the effects of the spill on the wildlife and the environment are still felt today. So scientists, I want you to think back to the videos that you watched at the warm-up and then the story, and I want you to answer the questions on the slides or the handout, and then there's some extra interactive games for you guys to play and some other articles for you to read about. I want you to think, how can you help our environment stay safe? 